Real life isn't usually as melodramatic as a soap opera, but occasionally, soap stars find themselves in situations similar to those you see on daytime TV, from injurious illicit affairs to stolen identities to full-on murder plots. Jensen Buchanan can boast credits in five different soaps, Another World, One Life to Live, General Hospital, As the World Turns, and The Young and the Restless. In 2016, she had a serious run-in with the law when she drifted into the wrong lane and hit another driver head-on. According to People, the California Highway Patrol determined Buchanan was drunk, and she was arrested for driving while under the influence. The other driver, Bradley Asolis, suffered severe health problems from the accident. According to Santa Maria Times, he broke his femur, pelvis, and two ribs. He also had lacerations on his liver, spleen, and pancreas, and experienced chronic heart problems. Buchanan pleaded guilty and was sentenced to a year in county jail plus five years probation. Asolis didn't think it was an intense enough punishment, telling the Santa Maria Times, I think it's wrong. My life's forever changed, and she got off with a slap on the wrist. Buchanan was released from jail after serving a month and a half of her sentence. In 2018, she went back to jail briefly for violating her probation, though ultimately she was found not guilty of the violation. Everything I believe in is compromised because of one mistake I wish to God I could take back. If you're a Days of Our Lives fan, you might be familiar with Freddie Smith, who portrayed the character Sonny Kiriakis from 2011 to 2020. In 2014, Smith was arrested in a drunk driving incident. The actor and his girlfriend Alyssa Tabbitt were visiting his hometown of Ashtabula, Ohio for a wedding. According to the local newspaper The Star Beacon, they were on their way to his parents' house when he fell asleep at the wheel and lost control of the car. He reportedly said in court, I went off to the left, injuring my girlfriend as well as myself. The Daily Mail adds that the car flipped over, trapping Tabit inside. She was critically injured and had to be immediately flown to a nearby hospital. He pleaded guilty to driving under the influence and vehicular assault, which is a fourth-degree misdemeanor. He was sentenced to three days in jail, a one-year suspension of his driver's license, and two years of probation. Sean Kanan is best known for portraying Deacon Sharp on The Bold and the Beautiful, though he's also made appearances on other soaps, including The Young and the Restless and General Hospital. Karate Kid fans will also recognize him from the third installment of the 80s film franchise as Mike Barnes, a role that he reprised several decades later in Cobra Kai. In 2007, Kanan was arrested for driving under the influence and charged with a misdemeanor. I'm also angry with myself. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've caused a lot of my own problems. I'm, I'm well aware of that. He was reportedly released after posting the $30,000 bail, but then a warrant was issued for his arrest due to a missed court date. Kanan denied that he had intentionally done anything wrong, and the warrant was reportedly recalled by the courts, according to his attorney. The soap star insisted that the whole thing had been a misunderstanding and that he'd done everything requested of him. He said in a statement, I take this situation very seriously. I have been working incredibly hard on creating positive changes in my life. I would never knowingly neglect a court date, nor any conditions placed on me by the court system." Soap opera fans know Jessica Morris for playing Jennifer Rappaport on One Life to Live between 1999 and 2008. A little over three years after she'd left the show, Morris got herself into a very soap opera-esque situation, in which she nearly bit off the lip of her married lover during an argument. According to TMZ, Morris was having an affair with the actor Rib Hillis, who was married to dancer Elena Grinenko at the time. Morris and Hillis were reportedly in a heated argument over their relationship when she attacked him by biting his lip. Hillis required 25 stitches. He insisted that he didn't engage in violence himself during the altercation. Morris was later charged with one count of felony domestic violence with great bodily injury. Her attorney stated, This situation is difficult for everyone involved and is complicated. Even after the incident and legal fallout, the couple's relationship continued. Hillis eventually got divorced from his wife, and three years later, the couple got engaged. Morris announced the news on Instagram in December 2022 with a picture of the couple celebrating with champagne while she flashed her engagement ring. In the caption, she wrote, So, this happened. Finally. Hillis added in the comments, Words can't express how much I love you. We have been through so much together and apart over the years, and you have never given up on me. On us. In 1992, two Brazilian soap opera co-stars became entangled in a dark real-life drama that ended with one of them dead. 
Guilherme de Padua and Daniela Perez played a pair of fictional lovers on the Brazilian soap De Corpo de Alma, which translates to body and soul. The two actors may have had an affair off-screen as well. Perez's mother was the writer of the show, and de Padua suggested that he engaged in the purported romance in a bid to enhance his career. However, the Associated Press reports that others suggested that de Padua actively pursued his co-star and Perez had rejected him. Whatever the truth, de Padua's wife, Paula Giomeda Tomas, was said to be jealous. When Perez's body was discovered with more than 16 stab wounds, de Padua initially confessed to the murder, but later testified that his wife was responsible, according to CNN. Tomas also initially confessed her part in the murder, but later recanted her admission and blamed her husband. In his initial confession, de Padua claimed that he drove Perez to a quiet beach. His wife hid in the back seat, eventually leading to a fight between the passengers. Ultimately, both de Padua and Tomas were charged with murder, and the actor was sentenced to 19 years of prison. He was released on parole after serving just seven of those years, whereupon he pleaded for forgiveness from Perez's parents. Pablo Lyle starred in the Mexican soap opera Mi Adorable Maldición, which translates to My Lovely Curse. In 2019, he got himself into some big trouble with the law following a road rage incident in Miami, Florida. According to the Miami Herald, Lyle and his family had been vacationing in the coastal city and were on their way to the airport. Lyle's brother-in-law, who was driving, cut off another car on the highway. At a stoplight, the driver of the other car, 63-year-old Juan Ricardo Hernandez, reportedly got out of his car and confronted Lyle's family. As he walked back to his car, the telenovela star got out of his own car and punched Hernandez. The blow caused Hernandez to fall, and the 63-year-old later died in the hospital as a result of traumatic brain injury. He went back, like, like, step back, and, like that, and I just, like, to a left. In October 2022, a jury convicted Lyle of manslaughter and faced up to 15 years of prison. Lyle's defense team requested another trial, but the request was denied, according to the Associated Press. The soap star's sentencing is scheduled for February 2023. Soap opera fans likely know Stephen Martinez as Nicholas Cassidine from General Hospital or Tony Santos from Guiding Light. In 2018, he was accused by multiple people of scamming them out of money. The Riverfront Times reports that several women he dated accused Martinez of having taken significant amounts of money from them under false pretenses. He even allegedly gained access to their social security numbers and opened credit cards using their identities. A pool repairman also accused the actor of scamming him out of $15,000. Martinez had reportedly claimed to have interest in developing the grieving man's script about his late son's life into a film. One of the women, Ashley Daly, told KSDK that she dated the charming soap star for four months. When they broke up, she claimed that she had to change her address to get away from him. Investigative reporter Robert Langeler further dug into the story and said, In almost every case, it's a young white female that he's met through online dating. The reporter claimed to have found at least 12 other women who shared a similar story about the soap star. Langeler told KSDK, I don't know how far it goes. I get the impression that I've only scratched the surface. British actor Bruno Langley is known for playing the role of Todd Grimshaw on the long-running British soap Coronation Street. According to The Sun, in 2017, Langley was accused of sexual assault, with two women alleging that he grabbed and groped them on separate occasions on the same night in a Manchester bar. Both women pressed charges. When the case went to court, the judge addressed Langley directly, telling him that he had lost his good name and further saying, On that evening, your conduct was quite disgraceful, indeed degrading. The actor's lawyer insisted that his behavior was an isolated incident prompted by intoxication. The Guardian quoted from a statement from Langley's publicist released after the hearing, which read in part, I have absolutely no memory of what happened because of excessive alcohol consumption, and it was for this reason that I behaved completely out of character. However, I take full responsibility for my actions that night. Since this incident, I have been dealing with and confronting some personal issues that I have never addressed, and I am also getting help for an alcohol problem so that this does not ever happen again. Langley was sentenced to 40 days of rehab and a 12-month community order, in which his movements were monitored and he was placed on a curfew. He was also ordered to pay his victims 250 pounds each and was registered as a sex offender for five years. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. 
Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE-4673. 